Okay, so this video is for those FRS BRZ86 owners that keep getting a reoccurring check engine light. Uh, the code is P000A, um, which is a recurring timing bank one or your cam sensor. Uh, so luckily for us, these engines are really, really easy for us to get to. Um, our cam sensors for bank one are over here. That's that top one and the bottom one. This top one is the intake one. The bottom is the exhaust valve or exhaust cam. Um, so the code told me that my my issue is on bank one, which is over here on the passenger side. Um, I looked at it with the SSM3 or SSM4 and uh, watched my my cam timing, and uh, I saw that my intake one on the side is reading very very slow. Uh, so that's definitely your culprit. Um, another test you can do that if you don't have the SSM4 is you can test the resistance of the sensor. So for that it's pretty easy to do. You just want to uh, unclip this sensor. Right there. And then what you would do is you would measure the resistance on the inside of the sensor here. Um, I believe the spec is that it should be between 5 to 8 ohms. I tested all four of my sensors. Three of them came back at about 8.2 and then this one came back as uh, 0 0.2 ohms. So this first one, the intake one, is definitely the one that is uh, not working right. So I'm going to be showing you guys uh, the Subaru process for replacing that and going through it all. A couple of things you're going to need is about six quarts of our Zero W20 synthetic. Um, they recommend the process that you use this engine oil system flush. What you do is you add this to your oil, you run your car for about 15 minutes, um, then after that you drain your oil, do an oil change, so I have a Subaru filter and a crush washer. And then after that you would remove the sensor, which is just uh, two bolts, you'd replace it with this part number, which is the oil control valve. And then you also need uh, both of these gaskets here. So I bought two valves just because, uh, just in case it happens again. That way I have it. And uh, well, I guess I'll show you how to go about this process. Alright, so I added this to my car. And I'm now letting it run for about 20 minutes. I'm about halfway in. Uh, spent my time getting my car onto the lift, that way I'm good to go with uh, the oil change. I also opened up and took a look at the cam sensor. So this is the one I'll be replacing. And uh, so you're going to install this backup ring first, which is the clear one. And then you install the O-ring after you add some oil to it. So I'll get that going. Alright, so I put my backup ring on first, that's the white one down there, and I added oil to this uh, o-ring and put that on top, and lifts it flush just like that. And now as soon as the uh, car finishes running for about 20 minutes, do the oil change, and then I will uh, show how I get this in and out. Alright, so the car finished uh, going through its run cycle, I drained the oil. Now we're going to take a look at these uh, these sensors. Let's see if I can get a good view for you guys. Uh, there we go. So I'm going to loosen these two bolts. They are a 10 millimeter. down here. Which of course is now gonna <laughs> give me a fight. Let's see if I can use 
my other hand. And of course the engine's hot since it was running for so long. There we go. Alright. I can go back to loosen my bolts. These bolts you can reuse. You don't need to get new ones. there it goes <laughs> down by my exhaust like always so see if I can get a, a good look in there and there you can see is our cam so I'm gonna pick that one up that fell and then uh, we can go on to replacing it all right. all right so we're gonna put the new actuator back in truck goes down, reconnect it, and uh, my problem should be over. So that's how you replace those oil control valve assemblies. Um, I have to get back to you guys and let you know whether or not it solves my engine issue. So thanks for watching.